Well, quarantine really loaded up the gardening bandwagon, but some local urban farmers have been at it for years. Yes, in fact, one local couple just moved their whole setup. Julissa Ortiz is live with them this morning, discovering purple tomatoes and whatnot. Hey, who? Right? Yes, good morning to you. This is it. You can see on one side it's got a little red, but then as you turn it around where the sun hits it, it turns a little bit on the purple side. Ooh, How cool, cool is that? It's like a disco you guys, meter. I, I need you to think back, think back a few years, and I introduced mm. you to this urban farmer. We visited his farm, which was like literally half the size, if not smaller. And look at this, he is grown. They moved. I've got Kyle back with me this morning. Hi. Hi, how are you? I am fantastic. And especially now that I'm learning even more about fruits and veggies. Okay, so tell me again, what is this one called? So this is called a black beauty. It's an heirloom variety of tomato mm -hmm. grown from a farmer. Um, it's, his name is Brad, and it's called um, Wild Boar Farms. It's actually local where they grow the seeds here. I love all the local, local connection, right? All right, so let's talk a little bit about literally you said you have grown this garden, you moved, and you added all kinds of fun new things. Yeah, so this is, believe it or not, it's sort of a temporary garden for us because we just came into this yard and all of this right here was just lawn a few months ago. Oh so we gosh. filled in the soil, put in a bunch of plants where we're growing all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Show me the yeah. cucumber. Take a look at this cucumber, you guys. So down here, we trellis our cucumbers because they get better pollination and more fruiting. And look at this thing. This is called a striped Armenian cucumber. And this is a little bit larger than we normally harvest them, but um, it's a cool variety and they still taste good all the way up to this size. Goodness. And then we have some smaller things that are smaller than you might normally see. This is a watermelon. So this is a small watermelon variety. And these will grow right on our trellis all the way until they're ready to harvest. Oh my goodness. All right. And then let's mosey on down here. Look at this. You have some tomatillos right here. Yeah, so these are uh, queen of Malinalco tomatillos. They're yellow tomatillos. This is when they're ready to harvest. And they're mm. extremely sweet. They sort of taste like a tropical fruit, actually. And normally they're green. You would uh, normally see those a little bit on the green side. Yeah, we have yeah. regular green tomatillos green, as yeah. well. So, Very cool. All kinds of tomatoes over here. Several rows of tomatoes over here. And then you've got uh, sweet peppers. But I want to show them the squash, Kyle, because, again, you got a big old one over there. Yeah, yeah. So these are summer squash, kind of zucchini and other things. And this is about the size that we harvest them right here, kind of your normal zucchini size. But a lot of people have seen if you let them go, they get so large so quick. And I keep this one as an example to show you if you don't pick it. It will turn into this just in a matter of Whoa. a couple of weeks. Oh That's a toddler. Right? Ginormous. Right. I know that is a toddler, she says. Oh, my it's gosh. I love this. You guys, this is what's so cool is that Kyle literally transformed this entire space into this amazing garden, and you documented the whole thing. You are now actually documenting a lot of what you do so that people can do this at home. Yeah, so I have an a uh, Instagram, a YouTube channel, even a TikTok, and they're all called Urban Farmstead. And I made videos to show the entire transformation of this space, along with tips all the way along. So you two can grow your black beauty. <laughs> and you guys, did you hear? He he is on the TikTok. He is doing doing the TikTok. He's like, it's kind of. Amazing. <laughs> Kyle, thank you so much. So awesome to see this garden. So fantastic. I'm telling you, I, every day I feel like my my thumb is getting a darker gray, shade of green. <laughs> <laughs> That's that cool. So awesome. I like how he's got it set up. That's a really nice setup. Right? Going. Wow. It's impressive. Well, 719 now. 12 hardworking Americans ready to roll up their sleeves for a list of challenges to figure out who is tough as nails. Cody Stark tough is standing by with the new show that's coming to CBS. Uh, Phil Kogan uh, joining us right now. Tough as Nails is a show. Now, you and I, we hooked up a couple years ago here in the studio. Uh, is it true or false that you came up with this idea for Tough as Nails because we met? Because you are tough as nails. <laughs> that is such a lie. I'm a marshmallow do you, man. Do you, uh, do you have calluses on your hands, young man? No. No, I do weather, hard man. Work? I do weather. No, you know I don't have any calluses on my hands. Craziness. Okay, t tell I us about you might be out there wrestling storms. Um, no, we, we, this show is about celebrating people who do have calluses on their hands and calluses on their hands because of the hard work they do every day to make this country work. That's really at its core what the show is all about. Now, you, the, uh, the audition process I thought was quite interesting. You actually went there instead of having people come to you. You kind of traveled the nation looking for these folks, huh? Yeah, I, I love the idea that we would travel into Heartland America looking for people who, in real life who are real tough. And so we took a, a trailer across the country 
and it turns into a stage. And then we invited people, got on the radio, got on TV and said, hey, if you think you're tough as nails or you know somebody who is, come on down, step up on the stage, tell us why you are as tough as nails. And so we had people do that. And we set up everywhere from Times Square to squares across the country. Um, and lots of people stepped up. Um, we had thousands of applicants. And in the end, we chose 12 of who we believe are America's toughest. Uh, give me give me an example. Is there somebody that's really going to stand out? Or I mean, all of them are great. But is there somebody that you think that we're just going to love? You know, one of the things that we really have prided ourselves with this show in terms of the casting is is heartfelt stories. People who have really done the hard yards to get by in life, people who are holding down two jobs, people who have faced tremendous adversity in their life and overcome it. People like Lynette Key, who ended up becoming homeless, lost custody of her four kids, managed to uh, get, become a welder after seeing a notice. Uh, on a, it was at the, at the homeless shelter that she saw a notice about a welding course. She's now a master welder. She got custody, custody of her four kids and she bought a home within the first year of working as a welder, got her life back together. This woman, she knows what it's like to make sacrifices, to work hard. She gets up at four every day, drives an hour and a half to work, does a full day's work, drives to a second job, does the second job, stops off at the grocery store to pick up food, to then go home and cook dinner for her family, gets into bed just before midnight, then wakes up at four o'clock the next morning and does it all over again. These are people who, and look, there are so many people in America who understand this, who get this. Not everybody is, you know, wanting to be the next influencer or be rich and famous. There are people who just want to go to work and make an honest day's pay to be able to do the right thing by their family. And those people are essential to making our country work. And so I come from very humble beginnings, working class family. My grandfather was a, a mechanic and an aero mechanic in World War II. I saw the lifestyle that he had. He talked about what it was like in the depression and World War II, the sacrifices that they had to make as people. And most people are those people. Most people understand that. And so I wanna celebrate the best of the best in their chosen trade. Those people, again, who make sure that you and I can have the things that we have in, in yeah. life and the power yeah. goes on and things function. I can keep things my, work in the I can world keep my soft them. hands because of them. Phil, thank you so much for doing this. I can't wait to see it. It's a Wednesday night on CBS uh, 13 here at the station. It looks it looks great. It really does look spectacular. It's always good to talk to you. Yeah, two hour premiere. Two hour premiere. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Stick around, folks. We got more on the big show. Bye, Phil. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. We'll be right back. Dad joke of the day. I do indeed have today's dad joke of the day. Okay, here we go. Get to prime the pump. Prime the prompter. Okay, still not Did working. Okay. There we go. Come on. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Where do hamsters go on vacation? Hmm. Where do hamsters huh. go on Where vacation? Where do they go? No code. Hamsterdam. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> cute. It is very cute. Oh, she thought it was very right? cute. I know. I know. I know. Oh. Hi, Corey. Oh, look, there's a hamster in his Hi, Morgs. Right there. Look at that. <laughs> I just had it for lunch. <laughs> uh, if you have a dad joke for us, please send it in to us. Good day at kmaxtv.com. Sub your line, dad joke. Give me credit for the joke because Lord knows I don't want it. Get through there. Well, stick it to the man. Let your kids rock out. Whether it's learning songwriting or guitar lessons, School of Rock is offering in-person and virtual classes. Lori is in Elk Grove with more. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I love I this. I have my fancy <laughs> microphones, Dan. This is about the only thing that makes me fit in here. Run, yeah. Nothing <laughs> else whatsoever. They are so talented. Ages 13 to 18. This is the house band that's here this morning. Uh, Jason letting us pop in to take a look at how these summer camps are happening a little bit differently. And as you look around, guys, you can see some of those changes. Jason, talk about what you guys have had to do to make this doable uh, to have in-person camps this summer. Uh, social distancing is definitely a, a priority. We want to keep our students safe. So all of our positions of students are six feet apart. Our singers are behind our glass partitions, our plexiglass partitions, and wearing masks. They all have their own microphones. 
So um, we're keeping the, the building wide open, keeping everyone spread out, and uh, still able to make music, which is pretty awesome. Okay, we want to let you guys hear them play, but Jason and I are going to step back kind of out of the room because we can't hear each other once they get going. So we're going to step over here. They can start playing, and you can get a little bit of an idea of what they do here at School of Rock. A lot of different things, a lot of really fun music, and you guys are also offering this online still as well. That's right. We have uh, summer camps um, in, uh, in the morning from 9 to 3, and we also have in-person lessons and online lessons for students of all ages. Um, so we're offering um, a, a completely remote songwriting uh, season show and uh, a pretty wide range of music for um, students of all ages um, that want to learn. So you can get a lesson uh, from the comfort of your home, or you can still come in and uh, take some lessons with us, which is pretty amazing. Talk about this experience a little bit for these guys because so many of these kids have not had a lot of social interaction over the past several months. So getting them back in here, what's that been like? Um, it's been pretty important for a lot of students, especially our seniors that graduated this year. Um, a lot of our kids here haven't been able to do anything. So um, we're very happy to provide a place where they can come and still be around their peers and make music together, but in a safe environment. And, uh, you know, we're checking temperatures and making sure everyone's washing their hands coming in and out of the building. So we're doing everything we can to keep people safe. Um, but it's been great for our kids to have an outlet. We're with an older group here this morning, but you also offer uh, these same types of classes for much younger students. Yeah, we have, uh, we have our Rookies and Little Wing program that is still remote, um, which is another great way to get kids engaged in music and have a fun activity to do. Um, but yeah, students of all ages are welcome here, and we're lucky that we can still make music during COVID. Thanks, Jason, so much. We have their website information up on the screen for you. This is happening all summer long here. School of Rock in Elk Grove. T, I know this is right up your alley. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Seriously, and I love how they're playing, you know, real good songs from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Like, do they even know who they are? Do you want to hear are? an embarrassing question, T? No, I don't. Do you want to hear an embarrassing question okay, go that ahead. I ask? Go ahead. Well, I asked if they knew any Justin Bieber because, you know, I was supposed to go see the Beats in May and he didn't come. <laughs> and I was going to see if they could play that song, but he said that's too easy for them. Oh, that's too oh. easy on that level. Oh. oh. I was like this. Wow. No, no. These children play real music. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. I love that. Play, that's Kids Bop. They don't play Kids Bop. <laughs> you see, like, hi, guys. You didn't Rune 5? 